In this video, we'll explain car battery voltage behavior during cold cranking. I will introduce the MediaTek Car Infotainment System Board Power Tree and tell you more about automotive pre-converter design with respect to cold cranking and EMI. Hello everyone. It's currently winter time and around minus 5 degrees Celsius. As you can see, my car is covered with snow. Still, we expect that when we get in, all functions, including the electronics, will work correctly. But this is not as straightforward as you might think. The power electronics and the system architecture need to be carefully designed to be able to work under extreme conditions. Let me show you what I mean. As you probably know, the car electronics are powered by the battery. But this battery voltage is far from stable. Under certain conditions, especially cold weather, the battery voltage can fluctuate considerably. Let me hook up the oscilloscope to the battery voltage and show you what I mean. Now I insert the key and make contact, but I don't start the engine yet. You can see that all the electronics have become active. The battery voltage is around 11.8 volt, which is lower than nominal because of the cold. When I now start the engine, you can see that the battery voltage drops considerably, momentarily down to around 6 volts, because the starter motor can draw more than 100 amps during cranking. After the engine is running, the voltage goes back to nominal, and then it gradually rises to around 14 volts when the car engine drives the alternator that charges the battery. What you see here is a typical cold crank battery voltage profile. All the other electronics seem to be working fine during the cold cranking. This is because all these electronics have been designed to cope with these kind of voltage fluctuations. Let's go back to the lab where it's nice and warm and I will explain you more about automotive electronic circuit design. Welcome to the lab. I will explain automotive electronic power design by means of this MediaTek car infotainment evaluation board. This circuit board has lots of connectivity, like USB, audio and microphone. It connects up to four cameras and it can drive up to three displays, like navigation and instrument cluster, a rear display for movie and TV watching and the rear view camera display. It will connect to your phone and play music over Bluetooth. In the climate control menu, you can adjust the car heating, ventilation, air conditioning, etc. The navigation menu lets you search for places, select destinations, and gives driving directions in a nice 3D map. Of course, you can make hands-free phone calls. And the rear passengers can browse the internet or watch a movie. The screen can switch to instant rear view camera. The heart of this infotainment platform is the MediaTek MT2712, which is a powerful 6-core SoC with CPU and GPU cores. It works together with the MediaTek MT6630 connectivity chip which supports Bluetooth, Wi-Fi and global navigation satellite system functionality. One of the key requirements of robust operation for the car infotainment electronics is a stable power supply for all these parts. The RichTech power solutions on this board provide the very precise low voltage high current supplies for the SoC and a special PIMIC ensures the correct power up and power down sequence of the different circuit blocks. A typical automotive power tree will be as following. 
we start with the car battery. As we have seen, this battery voltage can drop considerably during cold cranking. But it can also rise to high voltage levels when the battery is disconnected by accident while the generator is charging. We call this load dump. The next stage will normally include a peak clamp circuit, EMI filter and reverse polarity protection. This voltage is then sent to the pre-regulator, which can be a buck or a buck boost. It needs to have at least 36 volts max rating to withstand the load dump and must have high duty cycle capability for the cold crank. The pre-regulator generates a lower voltage, often 5 volts, which is then sent to the secondary regulators. These can be buck, LDO or boost, depending on the voltage rails they need to supply. The MT2712 infotainment system uses the following power distribution scheme. The battery voltage is sent to the high voltage pre-converters. These buck converters then step down the battery voltage to 5 volt. This 5 volt is then sent to the secondary converters that produce the low voltage rails for the MT2712 and other devices on the board. For the pre-converter design, let's have a look at the requirements regarding cold crank voltage levels. The ISO 16750 standard defines cold crank voltage profiles. There are different levels defined, where the minimum voltage dip level can range from 8 volt down to 3 volt. At very deep cranking voltage dips, the functionality of the device may be temporarily inhibited. For testing with cold crank voltage profiles in the lab, often a programmable power supply is used like the one shown here. But it is also possible to build your own cold crank voltage profile generator by means of an Arduino and a high current CCM buck converter like the RT8131B shown here. The Arduino PWM duty cycle is programmed to generate the inverse cold crank profile. The filtered PWM is then used to modulate the feedback voltage of the buck controller. Via an adjustable resistor, the modulation depth can be varied. The output of the buck converter will now follow the feedback voltage signal and this waveform can be used to test various applications. Here you see the self-built cold crank generator. I will measure the voltage of the buck converter with my oscilloscope. After switch on, you can see the repeated cold crank waveforms. When I now adjust the variable resistor, you can see that the cranking voltage goes deeper and deeper. Let's first test a high frequency buck converter like the RT8293B in a 5V 3A application with this cold crank generator. I connect the cold crank generator to the buck converter input and connect a 3A load to the 5V output. I measure the buck input voltage, output voltage and switching node. You can see that when the input voltage drops below 7V, the 5V output voltage already starts to drop. Let's zoom in to the voltage dip. Here you can see that when the input voltage drops to 5.5 volt, the output voltage has dropped from 5 volt down to 3.7 volt. So there is around 1.8 volt dropout between the buck converter input and output voltage. This is caused by the RDS on voltage drop and the maximum duty cycle limit of this high frequency buck converter, which is around 75%. The maximum duty cycle limit of the buck converter is related to the minimum off time and the switching frequency. The RT8293B in this example has a minimum off time of around 210 nanoseconds and a relatively high switching frequency of 1.2 MHz. This results in a 75% maximum duty cycle. 
To avoid EMI interference with the car radio AM band, automotive customers often prefer to use switching converters with frequencies above 2 MHz. This will worsen the maximum duty cycle even more. Many RichTech automotive buck converters are designed to operate at 2.1 MHz. To solve the duty cycle limitations, these converters are capable to operate at very high duty cycles, up to 99.9%. To illustrate this high duty cycle feature, let's test the RTQ 2945 42V 5 amp buck converter with the cold crank generator. The board is set for 5V output and 2.1 MHz switching frequency. I connect the cold crank generator to the buck converter input and connect a 3 amp load to the 5 volt output and I measure the buck converter input voltage, output voltage and switching node as before. You can now see that the output voltage stays quite stable even when the input voltage reaches 5.5 volts. Only when the input voltage drops to 5.4 volt or lower the output voltage starts to drop slightly. Let's zoom in to the voltage dip. You can see that when the input voltage drops to 5.1 volt, the output voltage drops to 4.7 volt. So there is around 400 millivolts drop out between the input and the output. Let's take a closer look at the switching waveform when the input voltage is slowly dropping. Originally, the converter works at 2.1 MHz, but when the minimum off time is reached, the converter starts to skip pulses to increase the duty cycle further. When the V-in approaches V-out, the converter duty cycle goes to almost 100%. There is only occasionally a switch pulse which is needed to recharge the bootstrap capacitor. This high duty cycle capability makes the RTQ 2945 very suitable to deal with cold crank voltage dips. You may have noticed some frequency jitter in the RTQ 2945 switching waveform. This frequency jitter is caused by the spread spectrum feature. It can help to reduce EMI reading, especially the EMI that is caused by the upper harmonics of the switching frequency. Let's use the scope fast Fourier transform FFT function to show the frequency spectrum. You can see that the higher harmonics are not really visible. Let's store the FFT waveform. Now I will do the same measurement with the RTQ 6345 which is the industrial version of the RTQ 2945 in the same configuration. As you can see the RTQ 6345 does not have spread spectrum frequency jitter. The FFT of the switching waveform shows the higher harmonics very clearly. The peak levels are several dB higher compared to the previously stored spread spectrum FFT. So the RTQ 2945 frequency jitter function also helps to reduce high frequency EMI. I hope you now have a better understanding about electronic power design for automotive applications. Please stay tuned for more interesting videos at RichTech, your power partner.